Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part four for our Pixel Platformer series. This series is made possible by the wonderful people who have supported me by purchasing my One Bit Godot course. It's currently on sale. There's a link in the description and in the comments below if you want to check that out. In this video, we're going to be covering tile sets. Currently, we have our character that can move around. We've got a variable jump height and uh, animations. Another thing we might cover too, actually, I just thought of real quick, is uh, making sure that our gravity never exceeds uh, a certain value. And this can be useful just because your character, as they're falling, you might want to uh, you might want to prevent them from falling at really, really high speeds. So we can just say inside of our apply gravity here, uh, we can actually do velocity.y equals min velocity, let's see, velocity.y and let's give some max value here. Let's do, I don't know, maybe 200 or 100. Well, let's do a really low value at first to make sure that it's working. We'll do 40. Now we should only fall, yep. So that's definitely working. You can see that we've clamped our gravity now, so we can't fall past a certain amount. Now let's try a value like 200. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit too slow still. Maybe I'll do 300. It's pretty hard to tell, but we do want to clamp it at some point. Okay, now we've got our blocks set up in the world and you can see that uh, creating new blocks is a huge pain. Uh, well, it's not a huge pain. We can just hit Control D and drag the new duplicated version around, but then it gets messy over here with all these blocks. And uh, really, we just don't need to do it this way. We can use tiles for this. So that's what we're going to do. So create a new scene, and we're just going to call this scene, well, we'll go, to, we'll go to other nodes, and then we'll search tile map. And we're going to, in fact, we might just leave this called tile map for now, and just save it, control S, and save. Now tile maps, uh, this is gonna change pretty drastically for Godot 4, but for Godot 3, uh, it should be pretty much the same. So let's do, although I'm not sure if it'll change in Godot 3.5 actually. We'll just have to see. It'll be, if it's different, then you may have to look up a separate video for how to do it in a newer version. Okay, but we need to click on our tile map, come over here, click on tile sets and, uh, Create a new tile set like this. Now our cell, if you remember, our tiles are, what were they, 18 by 18? Yeah, they were 18 by 18. So each of these tiles is 18 by 18. So we can come in here and uh, on our tile map and in the properties under cell, we'll set this to 18 by 18. Now the quadrant size, don't have to worry about that too often. Custom transform, don't know that that's going to matter either here and uh, we don't need to worry about any of these other properties actually we can just keep them the way they are now that we've done that we can click on our tile set and it will bring up our tile set resource here and it will bring up this little window and this window is where we can actually create our tile set and we'll start by creating uh, a new texture to the tile set. We'll press this button to add a new texture and select tiles packed. And then we can hold control and scroll to zoom in here. And you can see this grid that has been created nicely around our tiles. And that's because we set the tile size to the 18 by 18. Now we need to select a region of this texture that we're going to be using for our tiles. Now you could select a large region, but for us, we're just gonna replace that basic block right here that was in the room for now. So all, we can just select uh, that. Let's see. 
Oh, we have to we have to click this first. So we'll just do a new single tile. Click that. Now it gives us the option to select a region and we'll just select this single tile right here. You can kind of click and drag across it. Okay. Now that we've done that, we can edit collisions here. So we can click on collisions and this little box here, we can just click on our tile and there it adds a nice little collision shape to our tile automatically. Now we can save, come back into our world, click on the world node, and we can either drag in our new tile map scene or we can click the instance button and do tile map from here. Now, when we have our tile map selected, we can simply draw like this, or even hold shift to draw lines like this. Control, I think does, let's see. Shift control, you can even draw whole sections if you're holding shift, shift and control at the same time. And then you can right click with all of these same things so right click with shift and control to erase. So this is way easier than what we were doing before, right? This is a million times better. It makes it really quick to block out a level like this, which is especially useful when you're first making a game and prototyping that game. You can see the collisions are already working as well. Our little character is now behind the tiles. And we kind of want him in front of them because uh, he's, the, he's the main character, right? The protagonist. So we can either just move our tile map up one in the scene over here. And that will make it so that our character is now in front of the tiles. Or you could also adjust the Z index of your nodes in order to make sure that they're on a layer, on uh, a farther back layer. So a higher Z index is going to bring those uh, characters forward. So if we were to give our character a Z index of like 10, it would guarantee that it's in front of our tile map, which is on a Z index of zero. If we were to give our character a Z index of negative one, it would guarantee that it is behind the tile map. Now, if you're coming, if you've ever used Game Maker before, this is the opposite of how it works in Game Maker. So keep that in mind. The depth value in Game Maker is the opposite. Lower values come forward. But yeah, so there we go. This is this is great. Now let's look into getting a little more complicated with our tile map. We can actually add another uh, another tile to this if we click on um, if we can we just do it from here I, I'm I don't know actually if we do new auto tile if it will affect our single tile here we can find out though let's do it so I did a new auto tile now it wants us to select a region and we're gonna select I'm looking to I actually this this uh, this tile set is actually missing some tiles to in order to do a full auto tile. But I had a funnily enough, I had a dream where it wasn't missing them. And so now I'm like, maybe it's not missing them. Maybe if I just look, it's actually not missing them. And I just need to find them, but <laughs> I don't see them here. So it's okay. We'll just select this region right here. And yeah, it does actually, it doesn't seem to affect our single tile at all. So that's wonderful. Okay, so we're going to use these tiles mainly here for our auto tile. And the first thing we need to start with is, let's zoom in a bit more, is our bit mask. Now the bit mask tells the auto tiler how it should tile, uh, how it, which tiles it should display in certain scenarios. And... Um, we need to select some, we need to select which type of bit mask we're going to be using. And currently it's set to 2x2, and we're going to switch this to 3x3 minimal. This uh, 3x3 minimal and 3x3 are pretty similar, but minimal requires less tiles. 
and so you can get away with less tiles on minimal and in this case that's going to be perfect for us so we've got our tiles here and we need to set the bit mask so what it does is it creates a three by three grid inside of our tiles and you can see we can click left click to create a red bit mask and right click to erase it so what does this three by three grid represent well it represents the center of this grid represents our current tile and the surrounding areas of the grid represent the surrounding tiles. So when do we want to place this tile right here? Well, we want to place this tile when it is, um, it has no tiles around it. See, this would be a single tile with no tiles around it. And if you can imagine here, here's our tile. Now imagine the nine squares around it. All of these squares are empty because there's no tiles around it. So if we click right here, then we have a single tile with no tiles around it. And that tells Godot that it should use this image right here, this part of the texture, this tile, when we place a single tile and there are no tiles around it. Okay, now down here, look at this one. This one looks similar to this right here, except that it doesn't have a bottom. So what does that mean? That means that this tile is the one that we want to be placed when there is a tile, a single tile like this, but it also has a tile underneath it connecting to it. So then we would place the tile like this. And so this one right here is a good example as well. We would place this tile when there are no tiles around it, except when there is a tile to the left of it, like this one here. It's a perfect example because there is a tile to the left of it, just like we would imagine. And so, well, to the right of it. So if we place a, a bit mask here, that tells Godot that this tile should be used when we have a tile and a tile next to it. And this tile right here would use this texture. Now, you can think about exactly how it works, but you can kind of start to get an intuition for how it works. And so you can see that this one right here will draw all the way through. This one will draw except not to here. And then down here, it will be just like up here, except the bottom is connected on all of these, just like that. And then we'll scroll all the way down here because these are these tiles right here that are white actually have our uh, have the connecting bottom tiles that we need. So this one right here, here's another great example having a hard time zooming in on it. This tile right here, when should this tile be placed? This tile should be placed when there's tiles all around it, right, like this. So it's just completely filled in. And this, this tile should be placed with everything except on this side, everything except on this side. And you can see it starts to become pretty easy to figure out where these are going to go. Now we're still, we've got these inner corners here. So these tiles are a bit trickier to imagine. But basically they should be placed whenever there's tiles all around like this, minus this corner, like that. Now, what are some of the tiles we're missing? You might be like, this looks like enough tiles to me. Well, I'll show you. So we can save this now, and we can come into our world here. And now we have our single tile that we've been using. We can erase some of this to give us room for our auto tile. And we have our auto tile, and you can see if we place these tiles in the room, it will automatically create the right tiles. So, but we are missing some shapes from this. And what shapes are we missing? And you can see that's when we get these weird situations. So we have, we have a tile for this situation right, let's see, right, right here. 
this little corner tile, right? But we don't have a corner tile um, for this situation like this. We don't have a corner tile like this that has lines on the bottom. See, it should have lines here and then be a corner tile just like this. But we don't have that tile, so Godot just uses the single tile to fill it in, which looks really bad. But in our case, it doesn't matter that much because if we just make sure that we're always using a big enough um, base like this, then we're totally fine anyways. It doesn't actually matter. And we can always get a pretty good... Whoops, we forgot about our collisions. But yeah, we can always get a pretty good tile map. So hopefully that was enough of an explanation for you here to understand the bit masks inside of inside of your tile maps and how bit masks work because they can be rather confusing and sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to make sure that your tile sets are working properly. Okay, now we're going to set up the collisions. So we'll just come into the collision tab and we already set up the collision for this single tile. We're going to be doing it over here on our auto tiles. Now, you can't, when you're setting up the collisions, you're going to click on the tile you want, then click on the square, and then click inside of the tile. Now this process can take a while if you do it all, but there is a hot key now, which is shift R it seems, which should allow you to um, instantly switch to the, the square here. However, I have found that it is a little bit, you have to like wait just a second in order to get it to work. Or maybe shift R switches back to select actually, to the select. Let's see. Yeah, it's switching between these, but it's a little bit finicky. Having a hard time getting it to work. Some people were saying it was control R for them, but. Okay, it's like you have to hold shift and then hit R. You can't do it quick. It's a little bit weird, but it does seem to work. So you select the tile, hold, can, hold shift and then press R. Select the tile. Oh, we don't need that one actually. Come down here. Select the tile, hold shift and then press R and repeat. And this does speed up this process quite a bit with this shortcut, even though it's kind of glitchy. And there we go. Now we should have a collision for everyone. Now you can double up collisions, so um, keep an eye out on that. You can end up with two collision shapes on the same tile, and uh, you can just select it and then hit delete to get rid of it. So keep an eye out for that uh, to make sure that you don't double up your collisions. Now we can save again. And I don't think it matters too much to double up the collisions. I actually haven't tested. But yeah, just keep that in mind. And now we've got our tile sets working. So we're about 18 minutes into this video. It'll be a little bit shorter than the other ones, which have all been really long. But now we've got our tile set all set up. And in the next video, we're going to look at adding some basic enemies into the game. See what we can come up with there. Well, you know what? Actually, we're going to need to add hurt boxes and hit boxes in first. So we might add like a spike trap or something, because that's a really easy thing to do in order to add a hurt box to our player and a hit box to the spike trap. So thanks for watching this video. Really appreciate it. Hope you all are learning and enjoying this series and I will see you all in the next one.